Hi guys, and welcome to this new YouTube video where I'm going to be showing you how you can map a video texture onto all six sides of a cube in Blender. All right, let's jump into Blender and take a look at how to get started. So I have a new project here. You can always just do Control N, G, and that will create a new project for you. So I'm going to start with this default cube here, and we are actually going to use the default cube and the first thing I'll do is come over to the viewport shading mode of material preview so that we get a preview of our video texture on the surface. Next, I'll come under the cube's material properties, and then we'll choose the base color image texture. Now, the image texture also works for video files, so don't be fooled by the name. Go ahead and click open and then choose the videos directory that contains the source video, and I'm just going to choose this video here. Now, as you can see, our cube now has our video texture mapped onto it. However, it's being stretched and wrapped around the entire cube. And the result that I would like is to have the video playing on all sides of the cube. Additionally, you'll notice that the orientation is not correct because the video is twisted to the left so that my head is not vertical in the three-dimensional scene along the z-axis. So what we need to do for starters is to go into our UV editing mode and you'll see that we have an unwrapped cube by default. So our UVs are currently unwrapped, our cube is being laid flat, and this is how the texture is currently being mapped onto the surface. So instead what we need to do is to grab each face and then separate out the vertices for the UV mapping and then place the vertices for each UV mapping of each face into the correct position. So because I came over to the UV editing mode, my viewport here is not in the same material preview mode, so I'll go ahead and just choose that option. So now what we need to do is to start working in the face mode, because we need to be able to select each of the vertices of each face in the UV editor separately. Now if I hit A to select all faces, and if I try to move one of these faces, so I'll choose face mode in the UV pane. When I try to move one of these faces, you'll notice that the other faces are being affected because they currently share the same vertices at certain points. So this is not the desired effect. I want to be able to manipulate the vertices of each face independently. So what we need to do is start with our first face. And so because my default camera is over here, I'm just going to start with this face here. Go ahead and hit F3 and then choose the Select Split option under the UV context. Now this will allow me to manipulate the UVs for this particular face without affecting the other faces. So as I move the UV mapping around, you can see that the other faces are not being modified. So now what we need to do is to put this into position I'll choose the little snap option up here since we're going to be using some precise controls here. And I'll go ahead and move this down to the bottom left down to 0, 0. Now, the video that I have here is a 16 by 9 uh, 4K video, so it's 3840 across and 2160 pixels vertical. And the cube here has a 1 to 1 pixel mapping instead of a 16 by 9 mapping. So when we put these vertices for the UV mapping over top of the video texture, we need to make sure that we're taking into account the extra space that will be on the top and bottom of the video because I want it to be centered in each cube face. So go ahead and choose the first vertex here. So I need to change UV over into vertex mode and bring that UV up to the top right corner. Bring this UV up to the top left corner, and then bring the bottom right one to the bottom right corner. And we're just doing approximate manipulation right now. So what we're going to do is get a lot more precise here. And we need to do some really basic math to determine what the UV coordinates are going to look like. Additionally, you'll notice that I have the incorrect orientation here for this particular face. So I will need to rotate all of my vertices. So go ahead and choose all the vertices in the UV pane and hit R and then just hold the control key to get a precise rotation at 90 degrees. Now go ahead and just bring the vertices into close position because we've now moved them. 
and then we'll jump into the math that we need to do to actually set them precisely. So if you think about it, um, this white space here at the top and at the bottom is going to need to be 25% of the height of the video because the video is 2160 pixels vertical. Let me bring up the calculator here. So we have 3840 minus 2160. That leaves us with 1680 left. So we need to divide that by 2. So it'll be 840 pixels on the top and 840 pixels on the bottom. However, in Blender, we don't actually work with pixels. We're working with ratios instead. So what we need to do is divide 840 by 2160, and that's going to give us a number of 0.389. So 0.389 is going to be the offset of some of these vertices. So let's go ahead and turn off snapping here. I want to get a little bit more precise with my movements here. Now at the far right here, from where the 3D cursor is at, that's going to be X1. So let's bring out our panel here and plug in a specific vertex position of X1 and a Y value of 1.388888. That'll just automatically resolve into 1.389. On the bottom side, we'll choose X1. And then for our negative X value, we'll choose negative 0.388888, repeating. On the bottom left vertex, we'll choose X0 to align with the left-hand side of the video. And same thing for the top one. For the top one, we'll do 1.388888 repeating. And on the bottom left one, we'll do negative 0.388888. Great, so now we've got a proper UV mapping here. And there's one more thing that we will need to do here. If I hit F12 to do a quick render, you'll notice that my video is repeating here. So what we need to do is come under the texture, and instead of repeat, we'll choose clip. And that will clip the video in its current position. Now you'll need to basically repeat this process for each of the other faces on the cube. So what I'll do is select the next face here, hit F3 and do select split. And then we will bring these vertices into position. So I've got X0, X0, We'll do 1.388888 and negative 0.388888. And on the top here, top right, we'll do x equals 1 with a y value of 1.388888. And we'll do for the bottom right, x equals 1 and negative 0.388888. Now you'll notice that the vertices are the orientation of the Base is not correct, so we need to hit A and hit R to rotate and bring that into a correct rotation using the control key to snap the rotation. So that looks pretty good. So as you can see, we're just repeating this process for each of the faces. Now when you get to the top and bottom face, you'll have to choose what orientation you want the texture to be in. So I'm just going to rotate this one, let's say this direction so that it's facing towards the camera a little bit. I'll hold the control key to snap things in place there. And we'll just hit G to move this into the center. We'll hit S to scale it up. And then we'll start setting our vertices. Now there's also a vertex synchronization mode up here. And what this does is it keeps the selection of both of these panes in sync. Um, but sometimes that causes an issue when you're trying to manipulate the faces and you have to switch it off and switch it back on. So I would just recommend keeping that off for the time being. All right, so we're just going to continue mapping out our nodes here, or our vertices. If you do accidentally hit tab or something, just hit tab in the screen here to switch back into edit mode, as you do need to be in edit mode in order to manipulate the vertices. We'll set x to 1, 0, and y to negative 0.388888, and there we go. 
But I'll leave the other faces to you since you already kind of understand the process here. The most important thing is just to remember that when you choose a face, you'll need to choose the select split option in order to separate the UV vertices from the other faces. So this looks pretty good now, but there's something else that we could potentially do to improve it here. So what I've done is I've created a simple texture using paint.net. And the texture basically has an alpha mask where I would like to display the video and then display something else as a secondary texture behind the video. So any all this black space here, we can actually turn that into a custom color to make it more of a styled cube. So what we need to do in that case is to use nodes because we're going to use a mix shader. Let's go over to the shading tab. And you'll notice that we have a simple node structure here for the time being. We've got a single principled BSDF with an image texture coming in and a material output here. And you'll notice that the black section here is what we want to replace. So let's go ahead and take our simple nodes here and make some adjustments. So the first thing we want to do is add a mix shader. I'll hit Shift A and then search and then mix shader. And then just go ahead and put that in between the BSDF shader and the material output. Go ahead and link the principled BSDF shader to the bottom shader. Go ahead and bring in another principled BSDF shader. And this will be the color that we want to replace where the black is. So go ahead and plug that into shader. And you'll see that we now have a mix of white and the video. So with a factor of 0.5, it's blending both of them together. Let's choose a different color, like maybe a nice cyan color, so that we can easily see the difference in shade. Okay, the next thing we need to do is bring in an image texture. And then we need to open our image that contains our mask. And then we need to bring in the UV map, and we need to map the UVs to both of our input textures. And then next what we're going to do is take the alpha from the image mask and plug that into the factor of the mix shader. We also need to set the repeat mode to clip so that we don't have a repetition of our masking. So now you can see that we've got this nice two textured material set up here, and we have done the UV mapping to get our video onto the surface of the cube. So let's go ahead and hit F12 to render this out. And as you can see, we've got a nice looking video there. Now, I would probably want to add a little bit more light considering that one side of the cube here is fairly dark. So let's go ahead and go back to our layout, grab the default point light and hit Shift D to duplicate. And then I'll just hit G and kind of move it over into the Y axis here. So let's go ahead and hit F12 again. And as you can see, we've got much more even lighting from our default camera view. At this point, you might want to do something kind of interesting, like animate the rotation of the cube, or you could simply animate the camera. So I'll come into my camera's positional properties here, and we'll just hit the I key to keyframe the location. And then we'll come up to, let's say, frame number 100. And I'll hit G, Y to move the camera. And hit I to create a keyframe. And the other thing we need to do is keyframe the orientation or the rotation of the camera because it is no longer looking at the cube. You could also use a constraint for this purpose, but I'm just going to do it the poor man's way right now and set the rotation through keyframes. Let's bring the Z rotation up. We'll hit numpad zero to look through the camera. We'll bring the Y rotation over. Actually, let's set that to zero and then bring the X rotation down. And that looks a lot better. Let's bring the Z back a little bit. And now we've got it nice and centered. So go ahead and hit I on the rotation there, and then just scrub back through to make sure that everything looks okay. 
Now you can see how the cube is getting cut out here in the middle a little bit at the bottom of the frame. So one of the things that you can do is either set another keyframe and adjust the rotation in this position, or another thing that you can do is to adjust the camera's perspective. So if you were to bring the focal length out a little bit to kind of zoom out, then you could do that around, let's say, maybe keyframe 50. So what we'll do is we'll set focal length to 50 at the default at keyframe 1. We'll come up to 50 and then keyframe it at 40, and then we'll go to frame 100, and we'll keyframe it back to 50 again. All right, that looks pretty good. I think we are ready to render now, so let's go ahead and choose Render, and then Render Animation. All right. I forgot to set the end of our animation here, so it's still at the default of 250, but I think at frame 100 we're done here. So let's go ahead and just choose Render, View Animation, and you can see our nicely animated cube here. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again, and please hit subscribe. Cheers!